First thing we did, we, we learned it like anybody else. We learned the structure. So we sit there, we allowed a guy to feed us angles. The first feed that I teach the students uh, in my academies is just the five angles. Uh, you, you can find this in the inner side of uh, La Casa uh, 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 system. So see angle one, angle two, angle three, angle four, angle five. I'm gonna go really fast through this because Ms. Ms. Brittany's acting like she wants me to cover a lot of stuff. So, so I'm just gonna show you how we kind of start the student and then I'm gonna show you some things that I think is kind of unique uh, uh, in our uh, methodology, so to speak. So the angle one comes in, that's the first one we're gonna do. I can inside the flexion. Now, a lot of times that, that they, will, they will step into that, to that triangle step, but they get way too close to that rear hand. In our mind, the rear hand's always a blade. Best case scenario won't be. Best case scenario, a bottle and a grab, a bottle and a punch. A blade and a grab, a blade and a punch. None of those cases are really best case per se, but it's better than if he has a machete and a blade. But if we always train and handle this like it's a bladed weapon, we'll respect it a lot more. So when I do this, first thing I want to do is I don't want to step to the 45 in, I want to step to the 45 out. You see, and that, that gives me the access to that other line immediately, or to any other angle. That, that gives me access to it. You can work your different strikes from there. So that's the first one. I don't step 45, touch my forehead. If you can touch your forehead, you, you, you are too close. I step here, touch my forehead. Okay? So that's, that's, that's one of the things that we like to do. We like to always be aware of this hand. Now when the disc orb comes in, I can go inside the flesh. You see, I just grab it from here. I grab his wrist. Okay, so watch. So the inside, the, I'm trying to hit the hand. If I'm really lucky, I can hit the head. I may even have to take this shot and smother it to hit the head. We'll go over to some of the combatants maybe in a second. Okay, but as soon as I touch here, I grab it like I love it. Punch. This gives me time to handle that if I need to. Okay, so it goes one, two, and as I exit this punch, see that gets all the way down. That's a fun one for you to work on. Well, this isn't the details. If you haven't got the Mac Hook Collie video series, you need to get it. Uh, so yeah, so inside the flexion, grab, I used to always teach grab the thumb, grab the thumb. But we found doing a lot of full gut text scoring that uh, the wrist is usually what was being grabbed under pressure. So so yeah, if you grab the thumb, it's beautiful. As I curve it half moon, the forearm hits, see it? The ejection is a hit. And it keeps on coming. All right, give it a go. Okay, uh, that was awesome. I was wondering if you could also show us a few out of um, a couple different angles, different disarms that you would do um, from each angle. Okay. Um, um, Can we start with an angle two? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me talk about the angle one. Let me talk about the angle one in a little more detail. Which, what I try to separate is it the disarm itself that's going to be happy. It's the way we get to it. A lot of times, the, the mode, no, man, two, please. A lot of times, the things that we see, we, you're not going to decide how you're going to fight. That's what we call tool development phase. Okay. For example, if the number one comes, I can roof block. We all know the roof block. You could step 45, you could zone out and get just go to work on the other limb. The problem is, once I do this, we're now in a sporing mentality if I didn't finish it. If I missed the hand on the way in, because even our deflections are head shots. Look at that. So, so let's say I didn't do that. Now what do I have? I've lost that beautiful deflection. I've lost that moment in time that short circuit him. So in reality, this the way I approach disarming is that in real time, disarming is going to occur what I call inside the clash. So he's going to be doing 45 freeze. He's going to be doing a number one. Just got number one. Number one. Number one. Number one. Now, number one. Now, getting in that, he's only going about 60%, 50% of what he's normally could do. To some people, even that's scary, getting into that. So to make your disarms work, what I do is I add in a proper ingredient. It's called progressively introduce chaos. That's it. Progressively introduce chaos. So the number one comes. See, now I took his space. Now I'm inside. I'm securing him. Now I can go into my fight game. If he blocks it, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. All this could occur. Then maybe the disarm. 
That's the reality of it. That's going to happen. It's going to happen when you join this clash right here. This is where you drive into the wall. You're hitting. That's where the disorder may happen. So I want you to keep that in mind. You have the tool development phase of any technique, strategy, or concept. And then you have the functionalizing it phase. And to do that, you have to really strip it down to its core and progressively introduce chaos. So did the other set of cuts up a little bit? Did that help? Yes. Out? Okay. Yes. I know it's a lot, and we're moving super quick. So you talked about the number two. Okay, so this is the concept when you start training. Most people are going to start, every martial arts school is going to start at number one is their fitting angle. Every FMA school, Western sword fighting, just about every bladed art or system I can think of starts with an angle one. Okay? Um, so when we start doing more than that, we call it training for compound attacks. So there's a couple ways. He can strip it down and just feed me the angle two in what we call a single direct attack. Now at first he can isolate it. Trip. Remember my acronym acronym trip. T, you learn the technique. Or you, do the, you put the technique through tons and tons and tons of repetition. I, you isolate that technique. And then P, the secret ingredient that most people miss, you progressively, you progressively introduce chaos to whatever it is you're trying. Okay? So what we're going to do right now is isolate it. He gives me the number two. I freeze. So I'm here. With the number one, I can zone here and still do a pretty good, still do a pretty good, good safety-wise. Obviously, the number two, I have to change tactics. If I just block and try to check, all he's going to do is blow right through that defense, and it's going to keep coming and keep coming and keep coming and keep coming. He's going to run me against the wall and hit me with whatever he's using to damage me with. Okay. So what I want to do is I want to step to zone to zero pressure. I, I, I step in almost a traditional front stance when I do it. Ideally, this is mine. I want to kill it. I want to kill it and band-aid it. Okay. This is called covering. I rarely check. In Magnum Hook Collie, we rarely check at all. There are times, but they're, they're just quick little transitionary movements. We don't use it as a, a definitive type of, of maneuver at all. Because when you check, I don't care if it's here, I don't care if it's up, I don't care if it's down, there is too much space for a screw up. But when I cover, I check his space. And I am, and, 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 and I'm zoning the zero pressure. I'm constantly putting blood force trauma or getting cuts if it's a blade. But best of all, I'm pinning his arms to the inside of his body. Okay? This could be it. Oh, goodness. So, for the, for the, for, to answer your question on the number two and the way I approach this one, we hit and we hit. We hit and we hit and cover. Okay. Now, I, in reality, that's your disorder. That's your disorder. The stick in his throat or the stick in his eyes is this. But from here, when I hit and hit, so yeah, so from here, when we're hit and hit, this, he's going to try to start getting away, getting it away out of my uh, 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 covering, uh, painting maneuver here. Okay, So he's going to either do this two different ways. First way is he's trying to bring it up to his head to add more defense because I'm hitting him. Okay. Second, second reason why he would want to get it out Decided to do the back door, come back to number one. Is to be able to to try to to to, to use the weapon again. Okay. So when I close on him, that may do it. That may do it. I always monitor the other hand. That's the shot. That's the shot. And then I just wrap it right out the door. I disengage. Now from here, the disarm is already there if I wanted it, or I could wait for him to throw that other hand. A lot of times when we wrap, we show all these disarms for the art, for the beauty of it. But on the street, wrapping it, and that, the best this one now is just that he'll let go. He'll, he'll let go, he'll let go of the weapon. Okay? So I think the biggest difference that I like to stress is when I zone to the outside, I, I like to cover it. I like to step on the foot when I can. And I alternate head, weapon bearing limb, head, weapon bearing limb. If I want to disarm my kid, if I want to disengage, I can disengage too. Now, I noticed that you still had a snake disarm, uh -huh. uh, same as number one, but it was different. Uh, what's the difference in those? Well, yeah, yeah. You, have a, you have what they call a standard snake. You'll hear that in a lot of different systems. 
and you'll have what they call a reverse snake. Beginners will will mess up on the reverse snake immediately, so the sun because they loop the hand like this, and then that punches this there. Easy to strip it or take the weapon from me or lock me with it. You want to act like I tell my students. You guys, you guys know the coffee uh, coffee cup, right? So yeah, you don't hear that many years. So so yeah. So when I go here, yeah, I act like I got a coffee cup in my hand. Don't spill the coffee. Don't spill the coffee. Don't spill the coffee. Don't throw the coffee at his face. That's on the weapon. Okay. So if you follow that little trick. But but this one that I chose was just arbitrary. I mean, snakes tend to snake the weapon. Don't think of a garden snake. Think of a don't even think of a cobra. Think of a boa constrictor. You want to be as tight as you can. I mean, he's probably he's getting a and this can bring us into a lot of the do mob, a lot of the lockups, a lot of the secure positions. We could get into we could go so many routes with this. Okay. So so yeah. So I can snake his weapon. I can also strip the weapon. By stripping the weapon, you grab the weapon bearing limb in places that are conducive to this not moving when you put pressure against the thumb. In other words, I can't grab it here and think I'm gonna strip him. That's a different technique all, 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 all the time. So I have to either wrist or thumb tend to be tend to be a, a, a best position. So the next step with it is to not use as much possible with the weapon as you can because the weapon is here punch comes I mean the, 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 the weapon is here to be used for you not to worry about disarming the stick because hitting him is going to disarm the stick so when I hit him he may grab the stick even that happens a lot you strike hey, there's the strip see so grab it grab it see, see, yeah. and then you just clear it and hit okay? you're the one with the weapon so, so yeah, so so when I go here, you want very little movement. Look at that. This never left his head. And also, you use the bone, and you don't hit with it when you do strips. A lot of students, beginner, intermediate students, will try to do them. They'll try to make the stick fly or land hard. They hit. They're just hurting themselves. And if it was a bladed weapon, you'd, lay, you'd, you'd be laid open. I tell my students, act like your bone is a magnet magnetize yourself to the weapon and then press and then, and then whatever okay. does that answer your question? yes it does thank you okay, <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs>